Hey everyone, welcome back to our channel. If you're new here, please subscribe. I'd really love that if you're returning. How you doing? What we're going to talk about today is preparing for the unexpected as an essential way of life. I have been reorganizing, wow. organizing, stocking up like crazy, um, you know, just going through the motions of being of a prepared mind. And I actually had to bring in um, another shelving unit into the house for the overflow because my kitchen was literally so just stocked and messy that I couldn't even find what I wanted to find. And I, you know, I, I didn't know what I had be, and my inventory was just so messed up. I couldn't even take inventory anymore. And I've been pressure canning so much that I literally had no more room. So I'll show you what I'm talking about. This shelving unit right here, it's not even full yet because I just started it. But these jars right here, this is what I did just over the past few days. Okay. I've down there in that box right there. I've got 50 pounds of sugar, 10 pounds of extra salt, and then I've got all the canning that I've done over the past, say, four days, five days, and then overflow of pasta and more sugar, oil, and things like that. So I just wanted to show you what I've been doing because I think that it's extremely important as someone who consistently talks about preparing to show the people that I'm speaking to what I'm actually doing. And like I said, preparing for the unexpected is extremely essential. It's amazing how quickly our worlds can be turned upside down, even if just for a moment. It doesn't take long for it to happen. A, a power outage uh, can morph from a mild inconvenience into a major disruption take a hurricane for a, just you know a an example i go through hurricanes every single year i'm so used to them it's just like it's another day you know but we can hope that these disruptions don't last that long but it's best to be ready in case they do, you know, like when we have hurricanes down here, people who are seasoned to these hurricanes, we actually not make fun of, but we, you know, just sit back and wonder, are you seriously waiting until the last moment to buy cases of water and non-perishables? Don't you know by now that you should have been doing this the moment they said that there's, a, that there's a disturbance in the Atlantic Ocean or in the Gulf of Mexico? You know, but for people who have never gone through this before, they don't know what to expect or what to do. Having an adequate supply or stockpile of food and, of course, water for contingencies is a critical step to take for resiliency. Let's take a run through of the best foods to have on hand for long-term survival situations. And I mean long-term, okay? I'm not just talking, okay, well, the power went out. It's going to be out for about a weekend, okay? I'm talking long-term. 
These foods are also lifesavers when it comes to short-term survival scenarios as well. And it's worth emphasizing, though, that while a bare minimum, you know those 72-hour uh, kits that you can find in Walmart, might include enough food to see you through those 72 hours. A long-term survival stockpile, like what I'm showing you in my house, like with all the pressure canning that I'm doing and all the stockpile that I'm doing. And this is all the better from a prepper standpoint. Okay, I'm a prepper. I would love to become a homesteader, but I'm disabled. I, I can't. I can't have livestock. I can't, I can't even bear to even have a garden anymore. This needs to take proper nutrition more carefully into account. Having enough shelf-stable food items for two weeks or more is really a good idea. Not least if you've got the heads up, a lead time for a forecast approaching a storm or other impending disturbance, like a serious crisis, grid down, uh, war time, um, a pending apocalypse, whatever. Canned foods are a great idea for your survival stockpile, given that they're shelf-stable. They can be eaten right out of the can if need be. Good emergency supplies in this department include veg, fruit, meat, soups. It's ideal to have highly packable, lightweight, non-perishable foodstuffs in your emergency kit and certainly freeze-dried uh, or dehydrated foods and meals. Um, both freeze-dry and dehydrating uh, remove moisture from foods. A lot of us dehydrate our own foods. I have a food dehydrator and I love it. Um, and I wish I could get my hands on a freeze dryer, but who the heck has $4,000 just laying around, especially right now. This makes food more shelf stable as well as lighter. Though some of these foods like dehydrated fruits or veg can be eaten as is, while others require water and heat to reconstitute them. So freeze-dried fruits, freeze-dried veg, dehydrated pasta and rice, dehydrated meat like jerky. Dried grains and legumes not only offer really good sources of carbs, which your body converts into energy more readily than other foods, proteins and fibers, but also provide the foundation of many like comfort food. Uh, but not to be underestimated in times of stress and just all around highly versatile base like rice, pasta, lentils, and beans. Proteins, uh, another daily essential, of course, not least for keeping your energy up, and that's important when you're weathering your way through an extended emergency or survival situation. Fortunately, you've got good shelf-stable options. Uh, and mind you, you've got like what beans, including, you know, good protein sources like you know, tuna, beef jerky, peanut butter, nuts and seeds. Um, while having dry beans is an amazing option. I buy my dry beans a lot, but I pressure can them so they're pop top ready because in a crisis scenario, 
there's not going to be time to soak your beans for 12 hours and then cook them and season them and this, that, and the other when you've got a group of hangry people. So why not pressure can them now so they're pop top ready, you can heat them up and enjoy them and feed the masses or your family, you know. So now let's talk specialty survival food like MREs. If you are in the military or you're a military family, you know what MREs are, okay? Uh, emergency food bars or granola bars, energy bars. Um, stocking the right kind of non-perishable provisions is only part of the challenge for emergency preparedness. You also need to store and manage them properly. Otherwise, they won't do you much good and they could even make you sick. Cool, dry place in the dark preferably. I know that's not always the case for a lot of us. I can't store my stuff in the dark. Where is it, where is it going to go? Okay. Yes, it's out in the open, but it's always cool and it's always dry in here. Okay. So Like I said, cool, dry, dark. It's ideal for long-term storage. Choose a place that's not exposed to direct sunlight. It's not like I have my curtains wide open all the time. You're not getting hit with direct sunlight. Um, transfer your dry foods. Uh, purchased in boxes like your pasta into either mylar or airtight containers. Also, if you can get, well, I like the um, half gallon mason jars. They're nice. I have a few of them over here on this uh, shelf. If you're moving foods that require cooking or special preparations into new containers, make sure to re retain or write down the original packaging instructions. Take care in opening and closing, and closing uh, the resealable containers that you're using for your long-term food storage so you don't compromise the air and water type performance. Always make sure you're achieving a true seal when closing them, especially when you're doing mylar bagging. Regularly inspect your food containers for signs of like damage or pest infestation. Uh, discard any dented, bulging, corroded, or leaky cans, as well as food of any kind that looks or smells or tastes funky. You know what I'm saying? On the heels of a disaster, thoroughly check all of your provisions to make sure that they don't incur any damage. Get rid of any containers or packages, regardless of whether they've been opened, which came into contact with flood waters, okay? Especially if you're in hurricane prone areas. Pay close attention to use by or expiration dates, um, even though, you know, when it comes to use by or expiration dates, we still have a good year out. But I mean, if there's something that's like 10 years out, get rid of it. You know what I'm just saying? Okay. Um, part of managing your long-term prepper style emergency provisions is storing newer foods behind old, you know, rotate out. Okay. Please rotate out. Um, keep a list noting the purchase date, the date opened, the expiration, the use by dates for each items. 
including the ones that you transferred into a different container. As I've mentioned, keep older food containers in the front of the newer ones to be used first. To that affirmation list of purchased, opened, used by dates, add a regularly updated tally of remaining amounts of containers that you've dipped into. Prepare for extended power outages and other emergencies by making a day-by-day -day list of when suspected food items in your survival stockpile should be used and include how much water and other ingredients are needed for each meal. Consider separating your foods that require water and cooking from those of the ready to eat variety and specially labeled genuine survival prov provisions so that you're, they're left for the most dire and extreme circumstances. This is why I have been so hell bent on making ready-made meals for pressure cannon. So I don't have to worry about how much water do I need for this? How much water do I need for that? You know what I'm saying? This is why I've been hell bent on doing that. A long-term emergency food supply needs to take proper sustaining nutrition into account more than short-term supply does. After a few days in, your body is really going to need its essential daily allotments of carbs, proteins, fats, amino acids, and the like. So be sure that your emergency kit really does include plenty of well-balanced meals and foods with high nutritional value besides just bare bone sustenance uh, and those comfort foods and special treats. Add something that has vitamins and proteins and mineral supplements to your survival food cache too. This is why I've been doing uh, my ready-made meals like I did um, the sausage with the peppers and onions. I did SpaghettiOs. I did um, ham and 15 bean soup. I did split pea soup with ham. You know, uh, the, I, I, I've been doing all of these different types of things because I first, I don't want to get food fatigue. And second, I I want my family to be able to have all that nutrition. Um, bear in mind, too, that in certain survival situations, like if we have to bug out, like backpacking, climbing, outdoor recreation, you may be expending more calories on a daily basis than you normally do. So plan your long-term survival pantry with those potential caloric demands along with balanced nutrition in mind as well. If your household includes folks with food allergies or dietary restrictions, you obviously need to make sure that your stockpile of emergency meals and ingredients take these special needs into account. Because fortunately, there are many non-perishable foods available on the market that do not contain common allergies like peanuts, tree nuts, soy, and milk, and certainly dairy-free, gluten-free, and low-sodium options. Somebody with food allergies should not rely on emergency food products they've never had before in case they end up having a reaction to them. And it's not a bad idea to store extra amounts of food items for these individuals in case a major or a significant extended natural disaster situation where utilizing um, emergency shelters may be needed. Such facilities may or may not have foods appropriate for people with particular allergens or dietary needs or at least not be able to procure them right away. You certainly don't need to break the bank to assemble an adequate food 
you know, survival stockpile, there are a lot of affordable options, not least when selecting bulk items or large quality quantity, sorry, uh, emergency food kits, as well as, you know, with the components of your emergency kit, you don't necessarily need to buy all of your survival rations all at once at least that is it, you know you're aware of an impending storm or a natural disaster or there's a crisis coming and, and we all know it you and you need to prepare asap okay write up a list of what you need for your emergency provisions then work through it on a weekly basis, a monthly basis, buying a few things here and there. When you go to the grocery store where you're out running errands and you see a great sale, for example, can you get stocked up in a pretty short order while still spreading out the cost? Okay. These are just things that I think of that I bring to you that are in my head. <laughs> okay. All right, guys, I am out of here. I will see you in the next one. You stay safe. You stay positive. You keep prepping. And as always, fearless and Merry Christmas. Ciao.